Now there truly are worse ways to spend an afternoon. I have an Audi R8 LMS Ultra and the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit to myself. <laughs> Many people assume that GT3 cars are simply street cars with some interior scaffolding and a big wing. That they drive the same as something with a license plate. Audi has very kindly lent us an R8 V10 street car with an S-Tronic gearbox and its latest R8 LMS Ultra race car to explore this further. Yes, that's my excuse to drive them both. Oh, and the race car is $440,000. This is the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. First of all, from the seat of a streetcar, I thought it'd be interesting for us just to have the streetcar to show you the difference in performance. This R8, mid-engined, has fantastic balance, I have to say. Front of the car wants to turn, you automatically feel the limitation of the tyre. It's the tyre that's the limiting factor here. A few spots of rain. It's October at the Nürburgring. What do we expect? So I want you to see the difference in performance between a racing car with less power but with proper grip, no aero grip as well, and the street car. Because they're profoundly different. The V10 road car is a complete honey though. In these changing conditions, it gives so much feedback that you have real confidence. Never underestimate the sense of occasion just climbing aboard a racing car though. Wriggling into the seat, cocooning yourself in that space, adjusting the controls, feeling that it's just you and a V10 monster behind you. Belted in, there's a sense of connection or imminent speed missing in the road car that's right there in this race car. Okay, let's talk you around a lap of this new Nürburgring circuit then in this R8 LMS Ultra. I'm on wet tyres, it's wet in places and it's dry in others, so I've got the traction control set to about 7 out of 10 um, which gives quite a nice intervention actually. And that really is all we've got in these conditions. Gear change is just lovely. You snick it down using the traction control there. God, you feel like a superhero. You can just hang the arse out with your foot down. It's very subtle. Car turns beautifully. I really like the steering on this. It's the nicest steering I've ever felt on a GT3 race car. It's very pleasant indeed. Ergonomically, the cabin's lovely as well. And that motor, well, listen to that. That is heaven. Doesn't feel quite as quick as the street car, but normally they feel a lot slower, and this one doesn't. Does it feel like an R8? You know, it does feel like an R8. It's got very R8-ish characteristics. That lovely front end, it just wants to turn. It's delicious, really. And then being two-wheel drive, it does a lovely sort of equalization point where you just get on the gas and fire it away. I'd love to feel this in the dry with all this aero. Sadly, in the wet, we can't do much about it. And you can really trail break it. That's the impressive thing. You can trail break it right into the apex in a way that you just wouldn't expect of a mid-engine racing car. And then this is more up than you think, so you can brake nice and late. Again, you've got all that agility. God, it's a lovely package, this. It really is. down the straight. 
Doesn't it sound good? That's a really, really pleasant car to drive, you know? It's not intimidating. Of all the ones I've driven, that's the easiest feeling compared to the Porsche and the McLaren. That's the easiest one to drive. I love the fact the ergonomics are here. It's just easy car. Imagine having one of these for 24 hours. Slightly different to the things I've raced here before. No. Very pleasant indeed. Can I have a season, please, Mr. Audi? Thank you. The most impressive aspect of the Ultra is just how much of the streetcar's benign chassis response it maintains. Quite often these GT3 cars are far, far more unforgiving than the road car, but not the R8. There's less information coming from the front axle in the race car, but it counters by having truly world-class chassis electronics and ABS. The traction control is fully adjustable, as is the braking software, so you find the right calibration and then, as you can see on the video, just hit the pedals as hard as you can. It's the perfect gentleman's race car. The transmissions are wildly different though. The racer's proper pneumatic gearbox has short ratios and a direct shift that even the brilliant new S-Tronic can't match. Despite being a little down on power, the race car feels more accelerative and as for the noise, just listen to the Ultra. It's a bit special. I'm a massive Audi R8 fan and the V10 is the best one of the lot. It's no surprise that a great base car lends itself so well to motorsport or that it's been made into such a drivable package. Now, I just need to drive one at Daytona. Please!